Arizona State head coach Greg Powers drops by. How you doing, Greg? Doing great, guys. How are you? Uh, we are doing well. We are doing well. We're looking ahead to uh, next season. Uh, NHL, American Hockey League, Canadian Hockey League, NC2A Hockey. Uh, it really has become a very, very busy off season at every different level of hockey. What's the off season like for you, Greg, when it comes to recruiting and looking ahead to, to next season? You know, the, the off season almost seems more hectic, to be quite honest with you. We're, <laughs> we're, you know, we're building a program out here, and, and so recruiting is, is, a, is an absolute priority in every way for every member of our staff. So we're, we're not at home very often, and we're on the road quite a bit, going to camps and, and getting out in front of people as much as we can. And, and it, we're kind of at that turn now where we're, we're focused on the season here, heading into August, and, and we could be more excited. Greg, talk a bit about the growth. Um, you know, we see the Arizona Coyotes, of course. They have some great young, talented players. Austin Matthews, Scottsdale native, going first overall to Toronto. And great hockey right now with the NC, uh, NCAA. Just talk about the growth of hockey in Arizona, not just going into this year, but the last few years. Yeah, it's been, it's been fun to watch and, and be a part of. You know, we, we've been lucky enough, obviously, for, for 20 years here in, in the Valley to have NHL hockey. And, and the, the brunt of, the, of all the great growth out here is, is directly correlated to the Arizona Coyotes. And, you know, what's happened out here is we have unbelievable coaching. You know, a lot of ex-pros end up retiring here and, and, and you see them all over our local ranks and, and they're all coaching our youth teams and with good coaching comes good players and good development. and That's exactly what you see happening out here with kids just like Austin Matthews. So Greg, when you're out there and you're on the recruiting trail and you end up in a, in a family's living room and you're trying to woo their son to come and play for you, uh, what are the selling points other than the obvious? Hey, look, we've got great weather here pretty much all year round. You're yeah. going to love the weather and the climate out here. Uh, beyond that, though, I mean, what do you tell these kids with a program that's in its relative infancy still? Yeah, well, you know, our mantra here is, is, is be the tradition, you know, and then we, we, we really genuinely believe that, that it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for any kid to be able to come to the largest university and academic institution in North America, 85,000 undergraduate students. It's a, it's a vibrant, incredible campus. And the opportunity to build a program and be a tradition, and, and you know, what we tell kids is, is it's great. You can grow up dreaming about playing for all these great programs that have existed for a long time, but, you know, maybe beyond the picture of, of, of all the NHL players in their arena, you know, you get, you get in that hallway. But here you have the opportunity to have the hallway named after you. You, know, you have the opportunity to to really make a mark and, and and down you know 10 15 years down the road when we're a perennial power which we plan on being you can look back and say I started that and I built that and and we really believe that's a once in a lifetime opportunity and, and no other program has that to give the players Greg Powers is the head coach at Arizona State uh, the men's hockey program there has been up and running and is uh, progressing nicely uh, Greg playing as an independent uh, Word is, at some point, maybe it's next year, who knows when, uh, maybe you'll commit to a conference. Uh, tell us about playing as an independent, and I know geographically speaking, it, it it's a bit of a challenge, certainly, uh, based upon where you guys are and where everybody else is with the respective conferences out there, but uh, how much are you looking forward to someday playing uh, for a conference and within a conference, and how that might help you out and progress your program even further? Yeah, it's going to be big. We, you know, we, we, We're looking at being in a conference, and we're, we're going through those those stages right now by the 2018-19 season, which last year we played uh, what we call the hybrid season because we made the transition from club hockey to NCAA hockey. And, mm-hmm. and all of our NCAA games were pretty much on the road. We, we spent uh, a lot of time in the air. We, we traveled over 35,000 air, round-trip air miles last season. Um, we were gone quite a bit. This season we have more home games. Um, the flexibility of scheduling anyone that we want while we're growing this program, I really like, and it's been key to the growth. You know, we have teams like Michigan and Air Force and Northeastern and Harvard and Boston College and Penn State um, and Denver and Ohio State, Quinnipiac. So we have a great schedule and, and are able to expose not only our players in this, this, this young phase of our program, but most importantly, our community and our fans to you know different conferences and different different kind of looks of college hockey while we're growing this thing and and i think it's a good thing that we're independent for a few years to grow it get our feet wet and then by the time we we enter a conference we want to be able to provide you know reciprocal value to that conference and be able to compete right away
Greg, you mentioned the, the scheduling. What's the type of philosophy that you've tried to adhere to when you schedule opponents? Because some say, you know, let's go out and play the best because that's going to make us a better team. We may not win the game, and yet our players will gain a lot from that experience. Others would say, you know what, let's not bite off more than we can chew at this point here as we grow the program. I mean, what type of philosophy do you take to the scheduling process? Well, we've definitely taken on let's go play the best. Um, we, we, we you know, Arizona State did not add hockey to – uh, kind of, kind of gimp into the the thing, and then, and we have every intention of being a major player, and we know it's going to take time. And right now, there's not a tremendous amount of pressure to win right away. It's not realistic. We understand what what the the task is at hand, but you know, we want to play the best because we we want to we want to figure out and learn what it's going to take. And um, we have a young team, and and for our guys to to go out and play. You know, we have three of last year's Frozen Four teams scheduled. We have half of last year's NCAA field scheduled. And we're excited about it. You know, there, there's really nothing for us to lose. And, and, and down three, four years from now, it, I, I really, really, truly believe it's going to pay dividends. Uh, Greg, before we let you go, uh, not looking too far ahead, but there's something exciting, of course, coming up in late December, uh, the second annual Desert Hockey Classic. Arizona State, UConn, Brown, and St. Cloud. Just give us a taste of what's to come with that. Yeah, we had a press conference uh, two days ago up in Prescott. We decided to move it up an hour and a half north. They have a, a beautiful venue that seats about 5,000 people. It's actually a very good hockey community. They had pro hockey for a lot of years when before the CHL folded. So they're excited about this. We have a large alumni base up there. Um, to be able to expose that community and more parts of, of the southwest and the state of Arizona to – Division One college hockey really was our goal, and then to bring in three really good, historic, solid programs for them to get a glimpse of, uh, in addition to us being new, we, we think uh, it's going to go off really well, and, and we're all excited about it. Well, we look forward to it, and we can sense the excitement in your voice, Greg, with where your program's at and where you hope it's going to get to in the not-too-distant future. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Enjoy what's left of the summer, and we'll talk to you hopefully down the road. This has been interesting. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it.